Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 1st of September 2011. 152 years ago this day, we experienced a super flare. These are fairly rare events, they occur only about once every 500 years. So today's trivia question is what effect did this super flare have on the productivity of California gold miners? The answer will be given at the end. Since the last time we met we've had just one C flare and the x-ray background has remained at about the B3 level. So not a lot has been going on. This is slightly surprising as we have a large number of active regions on the sun at the moment. I've adapted the picture that I used yesterday to include a color scheme where green are growing regions, red are decaying regions and blue are stable regions. So I hope that guides where you look during the optical and magnetic movies that we show later. Let's take a closer look at some of these regions in detail and compare them with how they looked yesterday. Region 1274 which was near the west limb has disappeared now, as has the region to its north and east, although that region was numbered 1285 by NOAA. However the region to its south and east has grown quite significantly and here you can see it in detail. It's still a fairly modest region but it has some potential in the fact that it is growing. It has not yet been numbered. Here is what regions 1277, 79 and 82 looked like yesterday. And this is what they look like today. You can see that region 1277 in the middle here has hardly changed at all. Region 1279 to the south and east is either growing and producing more spots or is breaking up. I'm not sure which yet. We'll be able to tell better tomorrow. However, it's region 1282 that is the story here. It has grown quite significantly and is actually larger than either of the other two regions, with both a penumbral leading and trailing spot and a lot of small satellite spots in between. This is usually a good indication for future activity. This is what region 1283 looked like yesterday and this is what it looks like today. This region has given the appearance of growth, however that may be more due to the fact that it's further onto the disk and we can see more of the structure than actual real growth in the region. So we're going to have to wait a couple of days and see how this region develops. Finally, let's take a look at region 1281 in the southeast. This is what it looked like yesterday and this is what it looks like today. It seemed to have grown quite significantly. The leading spot is much larger and has a much bigger penumbra around it and the trailing spot is getting a tra trace of a penumbra too. There are also some new satellite spots out ahead of it and, and to the south of it. So this is a promising region for the future. However, despite all these changes in the sunspots, the level of solar activity has been very low. So now let's take a look at the evolution of some of these regions and see some of the trends that we've just talked about. Here we're using the data from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. To follow the individual regions, you might want to go into full screen mode and play this part of the video through several times. Next we turn to the transition region using the data from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. There are three things I'd like you to look at here. There are two areas that are look promising for future activity. On the southeast limb, there's a very dynamic and large prominence that looks as though it could lift off at any moment. So let's keep an eye on that. And in the northeast, there's this S-shaped filament on the disk. This sort of shape is supposed to be an indicator for a potential coronal mass ejection. I'm a little skeptical of this myself, but we'll see. Let's keep an eye on it for the next few days and see if it does lift off. There's been an actual event during this 24-hour period up in the far northeast, and you'll see that towards the end of the video. In the low-temperature coronal movie, look at the exquisite shapes of the loops above the northeast limb from the region just coming over that limb. By the end of this 48 hour period, the loop system seems to become much more simple and less structured. In the high temperature coronal image from the GOES SXI, you can see there's a coronal hole stretching from the south pole up to nearly the equator. In three or four days time this should start affecting us. Though the solar wind is fairly slow at the moment, it will probably increase as this coronal hole passes towards the west limb. There is not a lot going on in the SOHO coronagraph data. You can see there's a fairly faint CME off of the uh, northwest limb, but that's about it. You can see the same event in the larger field of view C3 instrument, and also note that Venus is now in the eastern side of the uh, field of view and is slowly moving away. In a couple of weeks' time, it will be gone. 
While the temperature and velocity of the solar wind has been steadily decreasing over the last 24 hours, the density seems to have been steadily increasing. The high energy electron flux seems to be continuing to rise slowly and steadily, and we of course still haven't seen a proton event for several weeks. The auroral zone seems unusually quiet, and the KP index is varying between just 0 and 1, which is also exceedingly quiet. So in summary then, the X-ray background is at the B3 level, the sunspot number is increased to 121, the radio sun intensity is at 109 solar flux units, with a solar wind speed of just 290 km per second, and a density just less than one proton per cubic centimeter. Geospace conditions are very quiet. So my 24 hour forecast is that there's a good chance of C flares, even M flares are possible, although X flares are very unlikely. The sunspot number should remain high, the chance of getting coronal max ejections is good, solar wind speed will remain low, and the chance of getting a major geomagnetic storm is very unlikely. From the composite coronal image we can see that there's still one small region due over the southeast limb probably tomorrow, but then there's four or five days before we expect any major region to come back. If you want to find out more about what's going on on the Sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun Today, go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to keep track of the Sun Today, please subscribe, you'd be more than welcome to do so. So now the answer to the trivia question. How did the super flare of 1859 affect the productivity of California gold miners? It turns out that this flare was so large that it produced very bright aurora, even at low latitudes such as California. So the miners were woken by these bright night skies thinking it was dawn, got up, made breakfast and started work by the light of the aurora. So the answer to the trivia question is that it increased their productivity. Funny old world, isn't it? So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.